Tokyo Electric Power Company says one of the thermometers in the number two reactor at its Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant exceeded 80 degrees Celsius on Sunday afternoon. 80 degrees is used as a benchmark to check whether a state of cold shutdown is in effect. But the utility insists that state is being maintained because other thermometers in the reactor register low temperatures. The thermometer in question at the bottom of the reactor began to rise late last month, prompting TEPCO to increase the injection of water into the reactor. Although the reading temporarily declined, it started to rise again and peaked at 82 degrees at 2.20 p.m. on Sunday. This is the first time a temperature reading has exceeded 80 degrees Celsius since the government and TEPCO declared last December that the reactors had achieved cold shutdown. TEPCO noted two other thermometers installed at the same height show temperatures of around 35 degrees. It also says a study of air samples collected around the reactor shows no signs of nuclear criticality occurring at the unit. TEPCO is increasing the volume of water into the reactor and looking into the cause, including a possible thermometer malfunction. The company says it will carefully monitor the reactor and will not rule out the possibility that its temperature might actually be rising. A document submitted to the government two weeks after the Fukushima nuclear accident suggested that the Tokyo metropolitan area might have to be evacuated. But the government failed to acknowledge the existence of the document until the end of last year. The Atomic Energy Commission report was compiled at the request of Naoto Kan, the Prime Minister at the time. The Commission's chief, Shunsuke Kondo, said the document explains possible contingencies following the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident as well as preventive measures. The report said massive amounts of radioactive materials could be dispersed from the plant if containment vessels were damaged or used fuel was exposed to the air if water injection failed. It said under such a scenario residents would have to be evacuated from an area within 170 kilometers of the plant and within 250 kilometers on a voluntary basis. This would include the Tokyo metropolitan area. The report recommended that various methods for cooling down the reactors should be used to avoid this serious situation. Khan told NHK last September that his government had made a simulation based on the worst-case scenario. But the report was not treated as an official document until it was discovered in the Commission's office at the end of last year. A Japanese civic group investigating the Fukushima nuclear accident is looking into the reasons why the document was not made public. Into one of the, this year's biggest stories, the Fukushima meltdowns. Kenichi Matsumoto is the ultimate insider. As special advisor to Japan's prime minister and cabinet, he witnessed both the government's and the plant operator's responses to the worst nuclear accident in a quarter of a century. And when it comes to the meltdowns, Professor Matsumoto paints a picture of cover-ups, incompetence and communication breakdown. He confirms that the operator of Fukushima, TEPCO, wanted to abandon the stricken plant and that the Prime Minister at the time, Naoto Khan, contemplated, com contemplated evacuating tens of millions of people from in and around Tokyo. Professor Matsumoto also accuses the Japanese leadership of knowing months ago that areas around the nuclear plant would not be habitable for decades. North Asia correspondent Mark Willisey reports from Tokyo. He's been described as the Prime Minister's brains trust, but Kenichi Matsumoto isn't a nuclear physicist or a scientific genius. The history professor and author was a special advisor to the Japanese cabinet when a tsunami slammed into the Fukushima nuclear plant. So he would become a witness to history, and he's given the ABC an ultimate insider's account of what happened in the hours and days after March 11, as three of the Fukushima reactors bubbled towards meltdown and he's damning of the plant's operator, TEPCO. First, TEPCO did not convey accurate information about the accident to the Prime Minister. It tried to make the disaster look small. Then TEPCO's headquarters wanted to evacuate the nuclear plant, but the chief of the facility vowed not to leave. So Prime Minister Khan was outraged because he wasn't getting proper information or the truth. This lack of clear and accurate information was feeding panic both in communities around the Fukushima plant and around the cabinet table in Tokyo. 
In the end, TEPCO was ordered to keep its people at the plant and to start feeding the government more information. Special Advisor Kenichi Matsumoto reveals that the Prime Minister at the time, Nato Khan, was considering evacuating 30 million people after being briefed on a worst case scenario. It's true that the Prime Minister said we might have to evacuate people from Tokyo. There was no clue about the amount of radiation coming from the Fukushima plant or if it was spreading over 100 or 200 kilometers. If that was the case, Tokyo would be in danger. And Prime Minister Khan actually said that Eastern Japan might not be able to keep functioning, that it might collapse. In the end, talk of tens of millions being evacuated was dismissed, with fears it could cause mass panic and chaos worse than the nuclear crisis itself. But at the time, what was collapsing, or more accurately, melting, were the fuel rods in reactors 1, 2 and 3, after they were left fully or partially exposed. In less than 24 hours, the number one reactor core had melted and burnt a hole through the pressure vessel. It wasn't until three months later that the Japanese government confirmed that the outer containment vessel had also been breached. But special adviser to the cabinet, Kenichi Matsumoto, isn't just critical of TEPCO's handling of the nuclear crisis. He's also scathing of the then Prime Minister and his former boss, Nato Khan. I don't think he handled it well, because it was such a terrible accident. Information should have been shared with the whole cabinet, but it wasn't. The information stopped with Mr Khan, who handled it alone. So the cabinet was isolated and wasn't able to formulate its advice properly. Mr Khan has since resigned and Kenichi Matsumoto has also left his post as special advisor to the cabinet. What remains are 80,000 people displaced by the nuclear disaster. They're now in their seventh month living in shelters or temporary housing and many are desperate to know if they can ever return to their homes. Kenichi Matsumoto says the government has known for months that thousands will not be able to return. The cabinet knew right after the disaster that some people would not be able to live in their communities for 10 to 20 years, especially those a few kilometers from the plant. The government should have conveyed the truth to the evacuees, but it felt scared, it feared telling the truth to the people. Kenichi Matsumoto has now left politics for the more sedate world of academia returning to his history post at a university outside of Tokyo. But he's still determined to write the history of the Fukushima nuclear crisis from his unique perspective from the inside. This is Mark Willisey in Tokyo for PM. And we approached the former Prime Minister Naoto Khan for a response but received no reply. A spokesman for TEPCO told us that the company never tried to downplay information about the nuclear disaster but did acknowledge that there were mistakes made and some confusion at the start of the crisis. Japan's atomic watchdog has endorsed the results of stress tests on two reactors at the Oi nuclear plant in Fukui Prefecture, central Japan. The Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency says the tests on the number three and number four reactors were conducted appropriately. It says there are adequate measures in place to deal with earthquakes and tsunamis. The report is the first by the agency about stress tests on Japan's suspended reactors. 51 of the country's 54 reactors are now offline. The agency plans to submit its report to Japan's Nuclear Safety Commission as early as Monday after briefing Industry Minister Yukio Edano. The Commission will review the report and consult with nuclear experts. The government will then make the final decision on whether to approve restarting the reactors. But local governments also need to give consent before any reactors can resume operating. The governments of both Fukui Prefecture and Oi Town have urged the central government to create new safety standards based on last year's nuclear accident.